we were at Cooley Law School, uh, the division of Western Michigan University. We were here celebrating our veterans. This is an opportunity for us as a Lansing community to just say thank you to our veterans for their service. Uh, they're representative of our country and to embrace our veterans and thank them for their service. In today's program, we will have uh, a general uh, who will give us a, a great speech uh, regarding military service and service to community. And it's an opportunity to see uh, members of our military color guard uh, present our colors, our flags. And so it's a great opportunity to socialize with some of our veterans that are here. We're having a, a breakfast brunch and it's just a, a great opportunity for the community to say thank you. My name is Mike McDaniel. I'm the Dean of the Lansing campus of WMU Cooley Law School. We're in the lobby right now where we're hosting the City of Lansing's Veterans Day event for 2019. I served with the Michigan National Guard for 28 years, retiring as a Brigadier General. The thing about Veterans Day is it's to honor all veterans. The distinction between Memorial Day and Veterans Day is Memorial Day is to honor you know, those who gave the ultimate sacrifice, who gave their lives for their country. Veterans Day is to honor all those who serve their country, who have served in some way in the U.S. military, in one of the branches of the U.S. military, and to recognize everyone, those unsung and unseen heroes who walk among us. We use this for all our large events. We can hold up to 180 people in here. It's uh, kind of great that the city of Lansing decided to have the Veterans Day uh, uh, celebration here today because we, we're right in the heart of downtown. We're, we're close to City Hall, we're close to the Capitol, and we really feel like we're part of the community and want to show that we're part of the community as well. My name is Sherry Jones, and I just want to welcome you on this hot 80 degree day to the city of Lansing. Um, you know what, but on days like this, when I see this kind of turnout, it's just so impressive because you wouldn't be here if this didn't mean something very deeply to you and to be honoring and paying tribute to these outstanding men and women just makes my heart so full. Can you all just give yourselves a round of applause for making the effort, coming out this morning and truly celebrating. It has been my pleasure to be your host for several years for this day and I always leave feeling um, just appreciative of our veterans, of our city, of the men and women who support our veterans. So I, I would, I, if I'm here in town, I would always welcome this opportunity to join you. It feels like family. So I hope that you enjoyed your breakfast. Can we give everyone here at Cooley Law School a round of applause for their hard work and the commission? Our Veterans Day Commission, who has helped make this breakfast um, possible for us today. Of course, today is all about the men and women who have served. A time to thank those who have sacrificed so much for our country. Missed birthdays, anniversaries, and holidays. And these are the moments in our lives that really define our lives, who we are. So skipping them because of the people in this room to serve their country is is a huge sacrifice, and their families who have allowed them to do that as well is a sacrifice on their part. Although thanks can never be enough, we really take this time to honor and really say thank you and appreciation for their sacrifice. At this time, I would like everyone to please stand for the posting of our colors. Our honor guard today is from the Michigan Army National Guard. And please stay standing after the colors are presented for the singing of our national anthem. And that will be performed this morning by Dr. Art Jocelyn, Jocelyn, a former student here at Cooley Law School. Oh, say, 
can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Let's show our appreciation again. Thank you so much, Dr. Jocelyn. Amazing. Our invocation this morning will be offered by Dr. P.J. Anderson, pastor at Space for Grace Without Walls, United Church of Christ, and chaplain of the Mayor's Veterans Commission. Let us join our proverbial hearts together as we approach the proverbial throne of grace. Eternal one and faithful friend, what an opportunity it is to breathe your breath and to be among brothers and sisters who have served in the armed forces for many, many years, still serving all around the world. We thank you especially for our veterans on this Veterans Day and for the families and friends that have supported us and we thank you dear God for providing your support and your protection and preserving us to the best of humanity's abilities we invite you to join us today that you will be so obvious and, and so present among us that we will feel the warmth that comes from your presence and that we will feel the peace that comes from your presence even in times of turmoil and that we will have joy of heart that keeps us going from moment to moment. We ask, dear God, that you would remember that we do the best that we can as human beings. And we know that you do the best that you can within us, those of us that allow you to do so. And so we ask, dear God, that we would show appreciation for your goodness and for your love and for your kindness. And for these and blessings that we cannot even think to thank you for, we thank you anyway. In the name that is known by many, because you have many names. And in our hearts, we lift up those names in our own way. At this time and forevermore, we give you thanks. Amen. Thank you.
the Glen Aaron Pipe Band. You may be seated. The Glen Aaron Pipe Band was formed in 1984 when with the McLeod of Lewis Pipe Band merged with the Clan Neal Pipe Band. Since its original inception in 1972, the Glen Aaron Pipe Band has performed at hundreds, if not thousands, of parades and festivals, as well as memorial services for police, firefighters, and veterans. You can learn more about this wonderful group by visiting glenaaronpipeband.com. And I would be remiss if I did not mention that Glen Aaron does not charge for their performances. Also, their annual fundraising dinner, the Robert Burns Dinner, is coming up January 25th at Eagle Eye Golf Club in Lansing. For those of you who have never been, including me, I know I hear about it every time, <laughs> find someone who has and ask them if they had a good time. I guarantee that they have had a great time. The smile on their face is all that you need to know. But I, I know that they do not charge. They look amazing. They come every year. I've seen them at many military funerals and Lansing firefighters, Lansing police. They have huge, huge hearts. I never take them for granted. And if you would please join me again in thanking them for their service to this community. Our next speaker, took the office of mayor in Lansing on January 1st, 2018, and believe me, he hit the ground running. Since then, his efforts have men, been met with much success, with more than $2 billion of announced investment coming to Lansing over the next five years. Lansing's time is truly now. I have traveled across oceans with this man. He is a true dignitary, a wonderful, welcoming bridge between the city of Lansing and many international cities and communities. And this truly, this economic development that we're talking about would not happen without his grace and personality. So please welcome to the podium, Mayor Andy Shore. Well, thank you, Sherry. Um, she does such a wonderful job. Um, we, we're almost at, at everything together, it, it feels like. So uh, we're, uh, we're kind of a team. We do this one-two uh, punch. But, uh, but yeah, I'm going to agree with Alfreda. Let's give it up for Sherry. She was, she was clapping first. Um, uh, let me also, I want to thank the, the Glen Aaron um, band, the, the Pipes and Drums. Um, they do a fantastic job. I have been to the Robert Burns dinner, and I do encourage everyone to go, and they will make you try the haggis. And um, they're all, they're all going to chuckle. And I have tried it once. Um, after that, I leave the haggis to the professionals. Um, but thank you. Uh, I'm going to answer the first question you have. Yes, the plows are out, um, in case anybody's wondering. Um, thank you for showing up today. Um, this is such an important event every year. And um, we see the weather, but we know that we know we live in Michigan. We know it's coming, um, and we won't be deterred. Um, but we do have plows out, and and, uh, and we're we're ready for the winter. Um, today is not only Veterans Day, but it's the day we go from pothole complaints to plowing complaints. Um, but uh, but we we're ready for it. Um, the city of Lansing is ready. But we appreciate you all being here. Um, I do want to to thank many of our sponsors. Um, we. Uh, this event is not, it, it, it looks great and it looks very seamless, but we have many sponsors that have agreed to, to help. They want to assist as the city of Lansing honors our, our veterans and our, our members serving. So I'm going to read the list. It's a long list, but that's a good thing. It's a good thing. We have a lot of folks within our community that want to assist. So I'm going to thank the following sponsors, uh, the AF Group, Auto Owners Insurance, Claypool Family Trust, Davenport University, Dean Transportation, Emergent Biosolutions, Farm Bureau Insurance, uh, Glenn Granger Family Foundation, Jackson National Life, Lansing Community College, the Lansing Board of Water and Light, the Loomis Law Firm, MSU FCU, the Neogen Corporation, PNC Bank, Sparrow Health System, and the w, uh, WMU Cooley Law School. Can we give them all a round of applause? Thank you for all the, thank you for all the sponsors. Um, I also want to recognize State Representative Kara Hope, who has joined us here. She is a state representative for the south side of Lansing and then the rest of um, kind of the rural Ingham County, Mason, rural Ingham County area. She's a very good friend, tremendous advocate for, for the city and the county and the legislature. Thank you, Kara, for being here today. Um, 
I also want to recognize Hyacinth House, who provided these wonderful flowers um, at uh, free. Um, and uh, we all know that Alfreda Schmidt always has something to do with that. And I do want to thank Alfreda for being here. Um, you can't have a veterans event with an Alf without an Alfreda Schmidt reference. Um, so thank you, Alfreda. She's, she's the only one in the room that has a building named after her. Um, so we, we appreciate everything you've done for the city of Lansing, and, and we will always recognize you. Thank you for being here. Um, if I could thank each and every one of our community's veterans, uh, I would. It is, it is such a, um, our veterans are so important to us here in the Lansing community. Uh, and I, I thank you all who are veterans. I thank you all who are spouses of veterans or children of veterans. Um, I thank everybody who is serving currently overseas. It's so important that we recognize their service towards our freedoms. Um, but instead of being able to thank everyone individually, we have days designated on the calendar like today to thank all of these men and women uh, who serve in the United States military. The veterans are our family, they're our neighbors, they're our friends, they're our heroes. Um, we have to remember that every day, but especially uh, especially today on Veterans Day. Uh, veterans have given years of their life to protect our freedoms, and for that we can't thank them enough. I am not a veteran. My grandfather was. My grandfather was a, a liberator. He actually marched into Germany in World War II as they liberated um, the concentration camps and others, and he, he told me limited stories. Um, but I know that the stress that brought on him and how he had to reintegrate back into society, and, um, and I think of him every year on Veterans Day, and I think of what he did. My wife's grandfather served in the, in the Pacific uh, in World War II, and, and he told her stories, and we, we share those with our children on Veterans Day. You know, they're in school right now, but when they get home from school, we talk to them about what it means to, to have a Veterans Day, and to have those who serve um, in a variety of wars to make sure that we, that our freedom, that we are free. Um, and it's, it's just tremendously important that we do this year after year after year so that we remember. Um, that we remember the, the, the courage, the honor, the sacrifices that were made for us. Um, so again, I thank everybody in this room. Uh, in February of this year, I signed an executive order to create the Mayor's uh, Lansing Veterans, City of Lansing Veterans Commission to help ensure that the City of Lansing serves our veterans the best we can. Um, this, as far as we know, is the first Veterans Commission here in the City of Lansing. Uh, it was tremendously important to me uh, being here a year you know, I get a lot of questions about you know, veteran services and how can we do more to help our veterans. And, um, and we said we need, to, we need to put those experts together at the table and to, um, and to figure all of that out. I want to thank Mark Alley, who is here somewhere. There he is. Uh, right over here, he is the chair of our Veterans Commission, and he was the first call I made. Uh, and he said, you know, he said, I will do it. Um, we said, you know, go, please talk about the important issues. So thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, our veteran, the commission works together to provide their expertise, resources, and support to continue to develop our veterans' initiatives, uh, which includes this important annual tribute. Uh, since forming earlier this year, the commission has been hard at work planning today's wonderful event, so thank you for all you've done. I also want to thank Mark Lawrence on my staff. Stand up for a second, Mark. Um, Mark is, is our staffer that deals with the Veterans Commission and makes sure that everything that they want to do gets done, so thank you, Mark. They're, uh, they're currently working together to gather helpful information about veteran services available in our community so they can share those services with those of need. So while we want to make sure we have an event like today that honors, um, it's more than just having an event that honors, it's making sure that they have the resources um, as they have need, as our veterans come home uh, and as they have a variety of needs. And we know, I know from when I served in the legislature that we don't do as good of a job uh, in the state of Michigan with providing these resources that our veterans need. We have significant resources, but we don't do as good of a job as we can, so now we have a Veterans Commission here in Lansing that I'm proud of that will make sure that those in Lansing are getting those services they need. Um, they're also planning to participate in the Sponsor a Warrior program to send hand-assembled packages to our deployed soldiers that are from the Lansing area, another fantastic initiative, making sure that we support those uh, from Lansing who are abroad. Um, if you're interested in getting involved with this Mayor's Lansing Commission, please visit uh, our website at Lansing, lansingmi.gov slash boards and commissions or reach out to my office. We're always happy to have engaged folks 
um, participate or serve on that commission will appoint folks. And I've had people randomly throughout the year since we announced this in my state of the city say, hey, how come I didn't get appointed? We say, well, you didn't apply. Um, <laughs> it's an easy answer. Um, so go and, and grab that application and apply if you're interested. Um, so I look forward to seeing what other ideas the commission has to better serve our Lansing veterans. We are excited to see this event um, have so many people here and have so many more in the years to come um, as we want to honor all of those who serve for us. So now I'm going to present a proclamation on behalf of the city of Lansing. Uh, thank you. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's, it's long. Um, but uh, whereas on behalf of the city of Lansing, it's an honor to join with the Mayor's Veterans Commission in offering this tribute to those who have served the United States of America in our armed forces. Um, talks about the history of Veterans Day, which I think most people know, but you know, President Eisenhower issuing the first Veterans Day proclamation. Um, we talk about the, the, uh, um, the sacrifices made. Uh, now therefore I, Andy Shore, Mayor of the City of Lansing, by the power vested in me, do hereby proclaim November 11, 2019 as Veterans Day in the City of Lansing. May all citizens come together on this day to remember and honor all who have served our country in military service. Thank you all for being here today. Who am I presenting this to? Mark. Let's do it to Mark. <laughs> we're going to give this to the Veterans Commission. That way they've got it. So sorry, we're just we're calling you up here. Do we need? Do we, is it anyone else we want? All right. So here you go. I present that to you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for everything Appreciate you've done it. for us. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you for to all of our veterans for your service and protecting America. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for creating the commission. We appreciate it very much. Our next speaker will need no introduction for those of you who call Cooley Law School your second home. Brigadier General Michael McDaniel serves as the Associate Dean of the WMU Cooley Law School's Lansing Campus and is the Director of the Master of Laws in Homeland and National Security Law Program and a tenured professor of constitutional law. McDaniel previously served in the Pentagon as the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Homeland Defense Strategy at the Department of Defense from 2009 to 2011. As Brigadier General, McDaniel was appointed as Michigan's first Homeland Security Advisor in 2003, while serving as the Assistant Adjunct General for Homeland Security in the Michigan National Guard. Brigadier General McDaniel had command and control of the Homeland Security Directorate of the National Guard including the military support of civil authorities, the 51st WMD civil support team, the reconnaissance and interdiction detachment, that's called the RAID team, anti-terrorism force protection, the exercise planning group, the counter drug division, and the Michigan Volunteer Defense Force. He has a Bachelor of Arts degree from St. Bonaventure University, a JD from Case Western Reserve, a Master of Strategic Studies degree from the Army War College, and a Master of Arts in Security Studies degree from the Naval Postgraduate School. He is the recipient of many academic and community awards, including the State Bar of Michigan Champion of Justice, the Zimbardo Award of the Naval Postgraduate School, the Distinguished Patriot Award by the City of Dearborn for his work on the DHS Task Force on the Countering of Violent Extremists. He's been presented with the key to the city of Lansing, and he's been inducted in the St. Bonaventure University ROTC Hall of Fame. He chaired the BWL Citizen Review Committee, which conducted a five-month investigation into the response by the Lansing Board of Water and Light. You remember in December 2013, the ice storm that we had and the power outage. From January 2016 to January 2018, he led the city of Flint's Fast Start program to eliminate lead contamination in the city's drinking water system. It's wonderful to have him right here in the city of Lansing to continue his leadership and continue, you know, really giving up his time and talents for our beloved community. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Brigadier General Michael McDaniel. So if we do this again, I'll uh, assure that I give Sherry a shorter bio than that one. And uh, Art, even though Sherry says you graduated, you don't graduate until I tell you you graduated. So <laughs> got to keep working there. Thank you all. Thank you all for coming. It's so great to see so many people here, as the mayor said, in such a day. Uh, because this day really matters to all of us. 
My message today, though, is quite simple. I say to all the veterans here, and I say to all the law students here today, never stop serving. And I say to the rest of us, never forget their service. We've only had a Veterans Day for 101 years. Seems like a long time, I suppose. But less than half of our country's life, we've recognized those veterans. Starting in 1918 with Armistice Day, just a year later, at the end of four years of bloody conflict. It was an easy time for the veterans back then either. Those same individuals who were recognized uh, with that first Armistice Day and the years thereafter uh, were, were actually pushed out of Washington, D.C. If you ever read about the Bonus Army, World War I veterans were promised a bonus. They marched on Washington, really the first march on Washington, and they were violently repulsed by those individuals who would actually become the leaders in World War II. Uh, General Douglas MacArthur was the leader. Uh, and at that time, Franklin Delano Roosevelt said uh, publicly, he said to the American Legion Convention that same year, that veterans do not get special treatment. And I say to you all, veterans never ask for special treatment. We just ask for fair treatment. We just ask that our service be recognized and that those wounds, both hidden and obvious, be compensated, that our families be compensated. That's all we ask. It's quite fitting for me that, we're, that I was asked by the mayor to, to give the keynote here today at this location. And, and I say that for this reason. The Army officer's oath, and this is true of all members of the military, starts with, I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic and bear a true faith and allegiance to the same. The oath of an attorney here in the state of Michigan starts, I do solemnly swear I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of Michigan. Law students and veterans especially, but to all I say, to whom much is given, much is expected. You were given a lot. We all won the lottery. We were born in the United States of America. And for some of us, we had the great honor to serve its military forces. So as both, you took that oath to defend the Constitution. That oath did not just create a duty, but outlined what your service will be. It's a natural contention for me to point out, uh, considering all the positions I've held, whether, as Sherry mentioned, but as, a, as a, an attorney, as an assistant attorney general, as a judge advocate general, as an officer in the Army, as a general officer, as the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense, all of those positions require as a prerequisite that you swear an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That is of no small moment, for it imposes upon such office holders not just the importance of the position, but the underlying attributes. Chief Justice Marshall expressly noted in one of his very first cases, in the law, that you, one of the first cases you learn in law school, as well as one of his first law, one of his first cases, Marbury versus Madison back in 1803, on the authority of the federal judge that arose from the oath that is taken uh, by that judge in the Constitution. That oath that is contained in the Constitution is not limited to the judiciary. The Constitution imposes that oath upon the president, on the Congress, on all legislators state and federal, and quote, all executive and judicial officers, both of the United States and of the several states. The preamble of that grand document contains our mission statement for us as a country. It says that we will establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves, and more importantly, to our children. That oath then describes a high level of independence and autonomy to each office holder within that realm for the execution of his duties. And I'd submit the oath to the Constitution is the basis then for two of the most fundamental tenets of public ethics in America. First, the protection and assurance of the general welfare, and then somewhat conversely, but no less important, the recognition of and the true perception of the need to protect the individual interests. Just last week, 
A service member was attacked for standing up for his country. Army Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman testified on Capitol Hill. His credibility and his allegiances were questioned simply for saying, under subpoena, simply for saying our democracy was at risk. Lieutenant Colonel Vindman was wounded by a roadside bomb or in the, the Purple Heart, which he wore with his uniform that day, of course. I wasn't surprised, no veterans here were surprised, that he sh showed that same courage and discipline in his service in the White House as he did on the battlefield and then again when he testified before Congress. He, like so many of us, was just concerned about doing the right thing, not about whether a nasty mean tweet might be incoming towards him. It isn't our veterans whose loyalty we should be concerned about. Everyone who took that oath swore an oath of loyalty, not to any office holder, but to the Constitution itself. Now, we all profess to love our veterans, especially at gatherings like this. And while we are sincere, Remember that veterans are defending this country 365 days a year. The heroism that has been demonstrated time and again by veterans from the American Revolution through the global war on terrorism to today sometimes is unnoticed. And sometimes the sacrifices are unnoticed. Let me give you an example. I intentionally use uh, a hero from the Vietnam era. Yes, that era was often overlooked. It's a story that all Vietnam veterans will know. Master Sergeant Roy Benavides, Green Beret, on the morning of May 2nd, 1968, he's a staff sergeant with the uh, Army Special Forces. He hears over the radio the cry, get us out of here. He's back at the base in Lac Ninh in South Vietnam. There's a 12-man uh, Special Forces team made up of three Special Forces uh, from the U.S. and nine mountain yards and they are totally surrounded by the North Vietnamese. He's not on, on duty, but he leaps on a helicopter, immediately goes there. As soon as he gets off the helicopter, he shot three times in the face and the head and his right leg. He ran towards those fellow troops. Four of them were dead. He pulled the rest of them back to the helicopter. Uh, the helicopter crashed because the pilot was killed. My enemy fired as he tried to take off. He got all those troops off the helicopter before it burned. Over the next six hours, he organized return fire, called in airstrikes, administered first aid, recovered whatever classified documents they had, was shot three more times. In the stomach and the thigh, he was hit in the back by grenade fragments. This fighting was so intense and so close that he was bayoneted by a North Vietnamese soldier and killed his last two enemy soldiers as he dragged the survivors aboard another evacuation helicopter when they could finally uh, when the fire had abated enough that he could finally arrive. When he arrived back at the base, Sergeant Benavides was unable to move or to speak. They were zipping him up in a body bag, and he spit in the doctor's face. It was all he could do to signal he was still alive, and then he was evacuated for surgery in Saigon. Many years later, President Reagan presented the Medal of Honor to Master Sergeant Benavides in 1981. 1981. I say that because just three, two years later, 1983, Mr. Sergeant Benavides came forward, said he had received a letter from the Social Security Administration that announced that they were going to cut off his disability benefits. He still had two pieces of shrapnel in his heart, or next to his heart, a punctured lung, still in constant back pain from those fragments. The government, in its infinite wisdom, as part of a cost-cutting review, decided to terminate disability assistance to 350,000 people, uh, and in his case, determining that he was able to find gainful employment. As a Medal of Honor recipient, just like every veteran here, but probably on more occasions than the rest of us, he was asked many times, would you do it all over again? His response was, I feel like I have been overpaid for the service to my country. There will never be enough paper to print the money nor enough gold to Fort Knox to keep me from doing what I did. So for all veterans, their sacrifice may not have been as great or as, as dramatic perhaps, but for many it was. 
and we have to recognize that. We can't cut off those benefits. We cannot stop the services which they deserve. Deserve. It isn't, it isn't a handout, it isn't an, an offer, it isn't special. For many veterans, the Constitution and our nation were important enough to endure those long separations from their families, miss the births and special dates of their children, perhaps freeze in sub-zero temperatures, perhaps bake in the desert, perhaps sweat it out in the jungles, lose limbs, lose their sanity, lose their lives. And military spouses have had to endure career interruptions, frequent changes of address, a disproportionate share of parental responsibilities. The children often have to deal with changes in schools, separation from friends, separation from their parents, and hardest of all, that uncertainty of whether their mother or perhaps their father will come home. World War II was a long and bloody war. It only lasted six years. If you go from 1939 to 1945, the Vietnam War, of course, lasted much longer. Officially started in 1955, uh, went to 1973 for over 17 years. We have been at war in Afghanistan now for over 18 years. Since 2006, not the whole way through, just 2006, a total of 16,650 active duty per personnel and, of course, mobilized reservists and National Guardsmen have died while serving in the U.S. Armed Forces. Now, 73% of those casualties occurred in circumstances unrelated to war, as we call it, and 27% died in Oconus during periods of active combat operations. Many have forgotten, I think, that we are still there. Many of us are so war-weary that we will accept the capricious architect, arbitrary executive whimsy to desert our allies and interests in the Middle East. This past week, I had a long debate with an officer retired from Northern Command that I served with in Europe. His son, 19 years old, served in the U.S. Marine Corps in Afghanistan. He came home, but forever changed after seeing his battle buddy, his best friend, violently die from an IED next to him. That changed the outlook of that veteran, of that father. And we had a long debate about the role of the military. So it's not just the citizens. Citizens may have forgotten or may be war weary. Well, so are the veterans. But know this, the military of the United States has bases in 80 countries around the world, over 150 countries, over 170,000 of its active duty personnel are serving outside of the United States today. As we look at the Middle East today, we see a large, dangerous, and committed group of fanatics that want to harm us. They want to attack the United States because we are still, we are still that shining light on the hill. And while ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and other terrorists may lack conventional weapons, asymmetric warfare will attack us. Just yesterday, though, General Mark Milley, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, said that although our footprint may be small, it's important to keep watch over the Islamic State in Syria to meet the objective of permanently defeating ISIS. So we are not pulling all our troops out. Those who defend us from our enemies must be supported, whether their services in Baghdad, Baghdad or Beirut, wherever it was, whatever group it is. We need to serve our veterans as well as they have served us. It is really popular now to say thank you for your service. Uh, I want to tell you that I've heard a little uh, blowback from some veterans who will privately, privately grumble that thanking them for their service isn't really enough. What I suggest to you is a couple things. First, when one veteran talks to another, it is often they will conclude that conversation saying, never forget. In their case, they are talking not about their service so much as their friends and buddies who are irreparably harmed, injured, or lost to their service. So I would say, I will not forget your service instead of thank you for your service. And then I will say this. You remember Winston Churchill who started the V for Victory? I want to suggest this to you. The V sign should be used again, stands for three things. 
volunteer, vote, and voice. Use your voice. When I've talked to members of the military, some of them have, some civilians have said to me, well, they don't really understand that they're defending the Constitution. Well, they may not talk about it as a document, but I'll, I'll tell you this, they do know that they are fighting for the rights contained in the Constitution, and they will say that. It, it, they are still to this day amazed that people do not vote. Vote your heart, vote your conscience, vote for what's right. Only you can decide, but that concept of democracy must continue. It's what made us great, and it, it will make us continue to be great. Secondly, volunteer in your community. Try and make a difference. Honor the actions of veterans by ensuring your voice is heard, not just at the ballot box, but in, in other areas, advocating for the veterans themselves. Educate yourself on veterans' issues. There's a huge host, a plethora of fantastic organizations to help veterans with real issues. And finally, the most impactful, is you use your right to make your voice heard. You make your voice heard through voting, you make your voice heard through advocating on behalf of veterans. Warriors need advocates. This is a very simple calculus. You must serve veterans, their families, and, and their friends, because our country needs our veterans to serve us. One veteran specifically told me, if you're not using your constitutionally granted rights like the right to vote, what the hell was I fighting for? That's a common, common thought, even if they don't always say it to me. And another sort of phrase that I've heard is, if you want to thank a veteran, then be the kind of American worth fighting for. Vote, volunteer, use your voice. In conclusion, I just want to say, Michigan is thick with heroes. They walk amongst us every day to our right and our left. I'm honored that so many of them are here with us today. Through my career, I've met so many men whose dedication, whose acts of selfless service, whose leadership would astound you, but to them it was simply their duty. Their stories remain quiet because no one asked. This Veterans Day, ask a veteran, ask them for their story. Learn who, would, who they are and appreciate what they've done, just as the mayor said that he does with his children. And then tell those veterans you will not forget their service and then go dedicate some part of your life in some way to serve others or to assist those who have served. Thank you all. God bless America. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, General. You had poignant words and staggering statistics, just staggering. And I, I really think at this time, I, I would like all of our veterans, male and female, all of our veterans and those who are actively serving to please stand so that we can recognize you. Thank you so much. And, and I always feel like it's very important to honor and pay tribute to the families, the spouses and the children who are your guiding light and shining light. So we can have our families, spouses, children, please stand, parents that we can recognize you as well for your sacrifice. And I really, I, I, I hope we all change our dialogue now instead of thank you for your service that I, I will not forget your service. I, this is just beautiful, just resonates so well. I'm gonna call my kids right when I get home because my children do say that. And, and I think it's just a different way to look at it. So much appreciated. That's really enriched all of our lives. Thank you so much, General. Can we give him another round of applause?
Well, the Glen Aaron Pipe Band will conclude our program this morning with two pieces they've selected, respectively titled The Battle is Home and The Battle's Oar. At the conclusion of their performance, our nation's colors will be retired in silence and our program will be concluded. So thank you all for coming this morning, for being communal and celebrating this Veterans Day. We will not forget your service. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day. of the military, whether currently serving or retired. Uh, so Veterans Day is an important day. It's an important holiday, and it's not just a day off to be at home, but it's a day to remember, and we are doing that here today at, uh, at, the, at Cooley Law School, at the Western Michigan University Cooley Law School, um, and we appreciate all the folks who have helped to put this together.